Shalom, Ami, Shalom. So I had a question from an elder. Um, they came to me and um, we had a discussion about the Apocrypha. Um, and they had a lot of concern about um, the Apocrypha and teaching from the Apocrypha. Okay. So um, I wanted to of course answer all his questions and i wanted to um do it in such a way that the nation the whole nation could you know benefit from it so we praise the most high and um you know we're gonna move forward and break everything down precept upon precept all right i praise the most high haya by shem yashua the yashua let's say amen amen now so um a lot of times you'll see teachers with this book called the Apocrypha all right Apocrypha in the Greek means uh, things that are hidden all right people call these books the lost books okay now anyone that truly 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 understands knows that no books are lost okay if they came from the Most High and they were given to us, you know, by his spirit. They're not lost. Okay, now some books, the Most High God did tell the prophets to write some down, okay? And then others conceal, which were just for the nation or just for those of, you know, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, some things um, we were to publish openly and some things were to be, you know, concealed back just for the nation, just for those of the nation that were full of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ba'asham Yahshua, okay? So now, so we're going to prove. Let's go to Timothy really quickly. Let's go to Timothy 4. Okay, so this is um, 2 Timothy um, 4, and we're going to just read down. It says, I charge thee before the Most High and the Lord Yeshua Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So this is saying, Shaul, right, gave a charge to Timothy, okay? And I mean, of course, this was to Timothy, but it was to all of us, okay? All of us that teach, all of us kohila. Kohila in Hebrew is preacher, okay? So all of us that preach or teach, okay, we have a charge over us, okay, all right, um, given, given us by his majesty, all right, given to us by Christ, okay, and that is to do what? To preach the word, to teach the word, all right, that was given to us, okay, not to add or to take away, all right, so we cannot add to the word that was given to us to teach the people to teach the nation and we cannot take away all right i'm gonna read it again it says i charge thee therefore before the most high and the lord yahshua christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom all right two says preach the word all right. It says, preach the word, be instant in season. All right. Um, a lot of times um, whenever we go out to preach and to teach, um, sometimes people get a little angry because we have a verse for everything. No matter what's said, we always have scriptural text to go with the teaching or to go with that instant okay that's what that means okay that's what we are commissioned to do okay that's one of the one of the things that the most high wants us to do he wants us to be instant in season okay when it's time for us to preach when it's time for us to teach he wants us to be instant he wants us to to say okay go to you know matthew 17 all right go to you know uh, Yohanan, first john three and four all right. 
whenever we are teaching, whenever we are before the congregation, whenever we are before those that need truth, we are to be instant. Okay? We're not to be fumbling and, and not know exactly where to go on how to teach people the scripture. Okay? We shall not mumble. Okay? And we're going to get to that. But we, we, we praise the Most High. Watch this. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. So the scriptures say also out of season. What does that mean? That means even when you're not preaching. Okay? Even when it's not time to preach, right? Even when you're not uh, before a congregation or when you're not assembled to preach or to teach, you still give scripture. You still give scripture, okay? Because that's what our life is based upon. Our life is based upon scripture, okay? You understand? Watch this. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove. What does that mean? That means teach people what they're doing is wrong. Let them know that what they're doing is wrong based upon scripture. That's the reason why it has to be instant, OK, you can't you cannot reprove with your own words. You have to reprove with the words of the Most High God. OK, you cannot reprove. You cannot teach. You cannot exhort. OK, with your own words. It has to be instantly done with the word. You understand? Watch this. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke. You cannot rebuke anyone unless you rebuke them with the word, because this is the standard that we live by. OK, um, reprove, rebuke, exhort. You cannot exhort without the word. That's why it must be instant. Exhort with all long suffering. And of course, we we are long suffering. To our Akim, okay? Meaning, we don't bash them with the word. You understand? We just teach them with the word, okay? Uh, long suffering. It says, uh, I'm going to start over. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, okay? So suffer, okay? If they don't, if they don't understand, suffer them. Suffer them. Continue to teach them. Right. Don't just write them off as a fool or a foolish person. Teach them. OK. Now, of course, um, if you if, if, if they continue in their wickedness, then they would be a foolish person. But you um, continue to teach those that want knowledge, wisdom and understanding. OK. A wise man will, um, you know, attend to wise counsels. So it says. Um, so it says exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. OK. And doctrine. You understand? So how can we begin to preach and to teach if we don't have um, a complete script? If we don't have everything that the Most High God gave us to teach with? You understand? How can that be? Right? We won't be able to give them tab da'at or good knowledge. It won't be complete. OK, it says three says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. OK, what is sound doctrine? If something is sound, what is it? It's complete. It is complete from A to Z. Right. It's complete. It's not half. It's not a fourth. It's not an eighth, but it is a whole. It's 360. You understand? It's a whole. It's a whole piece. All right? Watch this. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You see that? So, the scriptures teach us that uh, a time will come when people would not endure sound doctrine. All right. And definitely that time is now. OK. OK. Of course, it's been before now. But, you know, 
um, there's been a a, a a true attack on the scripture. You know, people saying, you know, that um, the Most High doesn't exist and the, the, the scripture is, is, you know, not from him and all of that stuff. Right. But of course, um, his his children know better. Right. His children know better. So that's not something that we really even really have to worry about, because the scriptures say that my children will hear my voice and another man. They will not follow. So we praise the most high for that. All right. Those that's going to be with the most high are going to be with the most high. So that's not even something to worry about. We praise the most high now. So now sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? Sound doctrine is a complete script. All right. If I'm teaching you. And I only have 70%, then you're gonna be lacking something. All right? You're gonna be lacking something. Watch this. Let's go. Let's go to Timothy. Well, let's stay in Timothy. All right. Second Timothy 3 and 14 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So the scriptures teach us that evil men shall wax worse and worse. Okay, meaning evil men are going to get worse and worse. Their evil deeds are going to be worse and worse. Okay, they're going to um, do evil things against this word. Okay, you, you understand? This word, our scripture, the Hebraic scripture, has been going under fire, you know, uh, been under attack since the beginning. Okay, watch this. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now watch what 14 says. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. Okay, now watch this. This is very, very, very big. It says, but continue in the things that thou hast learned and has been assured of. So today I'm going to give assurance that the Apocrypha, is good for teaching all right we're going to give assurance that the apocrypha is good for teaching all right that it that, that it's a part of the authorized king james version bible okay all right watch this it says but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them you see that 15 says, and that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures. Thou has known the holy scriptures. That's the one thing that you have to understand is that even by me giving you the information, even by me giving you the information on the Apocrypha, on the other books that the Most High would have us to read, you must read them yourself. Okay? You must read them yourself. That's the only time you're truly going to come to the full knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of what the Most High God would have you to know is when you read it for yourself. Is when you read it for yourself, okay? Again, it says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Yahshua or Christ Jesus. Okay. Now, very simply, the scriptures teach us who is a liar. The one that says that Yahshua is not the Christ. Okay. So, number one, if these scriptures taught us that Yahshua was not the Amashia, then, then, then they would not be, you know what I'm saying, from the Most High. All right. Watch this. It says, 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 17 says that the man of the Most High may be perfect. You see that? How can you be perfect if you don't have the whole script? You see that? You see that? Shaul said, beware of the concision, right? The concision. Those that give you a little bit, but not the whole piece. You need everything, all right, to, to, to teach properly, 
right? To rightfully divide the word of truth, to rightfully divide, right? You have to have the whole thing. You can't rightfully divide something that's missing pieces. You see that? Oh, we praise the Most High. Watch this. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You cannot be thoroughly furnished unless you have all of your furniture, unless you have everything that you need in the house. You, you, you understand? You cannot be thoroughly furnished unless you have all things. So we praise the Most High. Now, quickly, let's go to um, Thessalonians. We just want to give a good foundation. Hold on, let's see. First Thessalonians 5 and 21 says, prove all things. Okay? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to prove that the Apocrypha is good. Now, we're going to show something. Um, I've shown before. This is the Holy Bible. Okay. This is the Holy Bible. This is the 1611 authorized King James Version. All right. You see that? You see that? I'm trying to get it so you can see it really, really, really good. Let me just move this out the way for a second. You see that? Holy Bible, 1611 edition, all right? And then it, right there it says, see, authorized King James Version, all right? Now, this was the version or this, um, this script. This is what um, uh, King James gave, okay? This is whenever he was commissioned to put the scripture together. Okay, all right. Now, whenever he did that, as you can see, I'm gonna just show you quickly. It says, um, let's see if I can get it really, really, really good. It says, you see, hold on. I'm going to do it like this. There we go. Let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. Okay, so you see the Torah right there? You see? Right there. Genesis to Deuteronomy. All right? Then you got the writings and the prophets. You see right there? All right there. And then if you can see, I'm going to try to get it closer. You can see... The books called Apocrypha. You see that? You see that? Okay. So you have the Torah, the writings, the prophets, and then the books called Apocrypha. And then after that, you have um, the Brikadashaya or the New Testament. Okay. So whenever you see this, this is just this. You see that? The book's called Apocrypha. All right? And, you know, just like it said in Timothy, all scripture is given um, by the Spirit of the Most High. Right? So now, we're just going to show something. So whenever you see this, right, notice it says, authorized king james version you see that why do, why does it say authorized king james version because this is the 1611 authorized king james version okay now whenever you have now this here is a bible it's a king james version bible right but it's not an authorized king james version if it was authorized Okay, it would have the apocrypha in it. This this is just Torah, um, prophets, writings, and New Testament. Okay, but now if I take 
this and this together, okay? This Bible and the Apocrypha, the Authorized King James Version, then I would have this, okay? So this is just, or I'd say this is just this, okay? All right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into a little bit of scripture and show the connection, okay? We're going to show the connection between um, Torah, um, prophets, writings, you know, Apocrypha, and New Testament, okay? Um, and that's the thing. Because the scripture says it must be precept upon precept. So it's not like the Apocrypha is just wedged in there and is it, it you know it it doesn't match up with anything. Okay? Alright? So let's show. Let's show. Alright, so okay. So we're gonna go to first Kings um, eleven through forty one. Well eleven and forty one. Um and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in this first and then I'll show it in this and then in that, okay? So this is 1 Kings 11. We're going to start at 41. Now let's, let's start at 40. It says, Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam rose and fled into Egypt unto Shashak, king of Egypt. And was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. 41 says, And the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? Okay? The book of the acts of Solomon. Where are they? They are in the Apocrypha. And it is called the Wisdom of Solomon. The Acts of Solomon or the Wisdom of Solomon. Let me show here. Hold on. Let's show. Da, 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 da. Right here it just says Wisdom, but right there it just says Wisdom. If you can see it. I'm going to show over here. Okay. Is that those words are a little funny written kind of funny okay um, right there you see that right there it says the wisdom of Solomon or the acts of Solomon okay because of course he acted by his wisdom or he did what the most had told him to do by Hashem Yahshua with wisdom all right now so that's proven Okay, um, and I'm gonna read it again. It's uh, First Kings. First Kings uh, again. Let's see. First Kings eleven and forty one says, and the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? Okay, so you're not gonna be able to read the acts of Solomon or the wisdom of Solomon unless. You read the Apocrypha, okay? So you 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 will have no knowledge on that, okay? You're you won't be complete. You won't be able to rightfully divide the word of truth because you won't have that truth. You understand what I'm saying? You won't have that, okay? Let's keep going. Let's go to the Book of Jeremiah, just really quick. Ah, the Book of Jeremiah, and let's go to 36. Oh, we praise the Most High. I'm Jeremiah 36, and we're going to start at 2. It says, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee. So this is the Most High God speaking to Jeremiah, okay, or Jeremiah, okay? Let me show you what I'm reading. This is Jeremiah. You see that? Jeremiah 36, okay? It says, 
Take thee a roll of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel. So the Most High God told Jeremiah to take a roll of a book and write all the words that the Most High spoke unto him concerning us, concerning Yasha Allah, concerning Israel. All right. It says, take thee a roll of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel. Um, and against Huda or Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. So the most high told Jeremiah, okay, the prophet Jeremiah to take a roll of a book and write everything that he'd ever said to him concerning Israel, concerning Huda, all the other nations. So the whole family, okay, and all the other nations, okay? We praise the Most High. Uh, let's see. Three says, it may be that the house of Huda will hear all the evil that I propose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Okay? Watch this. The Most High is still talking to Jeremiah. Let, let, let's, let's watch, but watch this. Four says, Then Jeremiah called Baruch. Baruch. Okay? The son of of Neriah and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book watch this why is that the most high God told Jeremiah to write it okay but watch this in Yasha Allah Okay, we have Kohela, which is priest. We have uh, Naviam, which is prophets. Okay, all right. And then uh, we have uh, scribes, ones that write. Okay, because um, during these times and even now, okay. Some of the children of Israel can speak the language, okay? Some of them, notice, um, whenever you go through the uh, gifts that the Most High gave, you know, some can um, speak tongue, right? Some can speak the language, okay? And some can uh, write, okay? Some can write the language, okay? You understand? Watch this. It says, um, let's start at three again. No, four again. It says, then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord, which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. You see that? Let's keep going. It says, and Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. So Jeremiah was in prison. He was shut up. Okay. That's another reason why he needed uh, Baruch to do this for him, because he was in prison. Okay. Watch this. It says, and Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the of the Most High. Therefore, go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Most High in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Huda that come out of their cities. You see that? Seven says, it may be they will present their supplication before the Most High 
and will return everyone from his evil way. For great is the anger and the fury of the Most High. For great, hold on. For great is the anger and the fury that the Most High hath pronounced against this people. Okay? Eight says, And Baruch, the son of Neriah, did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book the words of Ahiah in the Lord's house. You see that? Now, let's keep going a little bit more. Let's go to, um, let's keep going. It says, 9 says, And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Yoziah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before Ahiah to all the people in Jerusalem, and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. 10 says, Then read Baruch in the book the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Jim Raiah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the ears of all the people. You see that? And what was it that um, Baruch read to them? It was what the Most High God had Jeremiah to pronounce to them. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to Jeremiah 36 and 17. It says, uh, as a matter of fact, let's let's start at um let's start at 15. It says, and they said unto him, Sit down now and read it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ear. Now it came to pass when they had heard all the words, they were afraid, both one and other, and said unto Baruch, We will surely tell the king of all these words. And they asked Baruch, saying, Tell us now, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? 18 says, Then Baruch answered them, He pronounced all these words unto me, with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. You see that? We praise the Most High. I want to skip down to 26 now. This is um, Jeremiah 36 and 26. It says, But the king commanded Yeramim, the son of Hamalek, and Sarayah, the son of Azrael, and Shil. Miah, the son of Abdel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. All right, watch this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah. Now watch this. The king, they didn't like what the Most High God um, told Jeremiah to write. They didn't want to hear it. It's just like today. People don't want to hear the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. The people don't want to hear what is true. Okay? They want to hear a bunch of lies. Right? They don't want you to prophesy. They, they don't want you to say those things that are true and right and righteous. They want to hear a bunch of lies. Okay? They want to hear a bunch of fairy tales. You understand? They don't want to hear the complete script. Okay? Watch this. It says, um, Then the word of Ahiah came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again. Okay? Another roll. And write in it all the former words that were in the first roll. So, again, you see, the Most High God himself signed off 
on Baruch because he said, write down everything, everything that was written before, write it again. Write it again. And who wrote it? Baruch wrote it. Baruch wrote it. Jeremiah prophesied it. You understand? The Most High God gave Jeremiah the information. Okay? The information came to the prophet Jeremiah via the Most High God. The information from the Most High God came to the scribe Baruch via the prophet Jeremiah. The Most High God instructed the prophet Jeremiah to have the same things that were written before that got burned by the king to be written again. Okay? You understand that. Watch this. It says, um, 28, take thee again another roll and write in it all the former words that were in the first roll, which uh, Yerachim, the king of Judah, hath burned. Let's go to 32. It says, then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe. You see that? Baruch was a scribe. He, he was a writer. You understand? 32 says, Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jerachim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And there were added besides unto them many like words. So the second time the Most High God had him to rewrite it, the Most High God gave him more. He gave him even more. You see that? We praise the Most High. Now, where can you find the words that the Most High God gave to Jeremiah for the nation that Baruch wrote? OK, and notice the scriptures say that the second time he gave him the words, he gave him the former words. OK, but he also gave him many like words. So he gave him more words. He gave him more information the second time. And where can you find that information? In the book of Baruch. In the Apocrypha. You see that? This is Baruch 1. And it says, And these are the words of the book, which Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Mausius, the son of Sedesius, the son of Asadius, the son of Chelsius, wrote in Babylon in the fifth year and in the seventh day of the month, uh, what time as the Chaldeans took Jerusalem and burned it with fire. And Baruch did read the words of this book in the hearing of uh, Jaconius, the son of Yerachim, king of Judah, and in the ears of all the people that came to hear the book, and in the hearing of the nobles and of the king's sons, and in the hearing of the elders and of all the people from the lowest unto the highest, even of all them that dwelt at Babylon by the river Sod. You see that? These are things that you will never have understanding on if you don't read them. Okay? If you don't read them. All right? These are things that you'll never have knowledge of if you just don't read them. If you, if you allow people to say, well, you know, you shouldn't read the Apocrypha. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who who told you you shouldn't read the Apocrypha? The so-called white man. <laughs> right? You see that? The devil, the so-called white man. And people, you know, you got to understand something. Whenever we say, you know, the so-called white man is the devil, the word devil just means deceiver. You see that? You, you understand that? And so Satan or the devil wouldn't want you to have the information to rightfully divide scripture because 
Satan is so um, full of knowledge himself that he knows that if he can just make you offend in one point, if he can make you do something that the Most High God would not have you to do, then you're sinning, either knowingly or unknowingly sinning, okay? Right? And we can't add or take away. Deuteronomy 4, Torah teaches us that we cannot add or take away from the word of the Most High, okay? Let's show. Let's show that real quick. The so-called Jesuits came together, all right? So the heathen, what they did is they sought to put their images, their likeness in our scriptures so that um, people would start to reverence them as the holy people. And, uh, you know, of course, it's worked, you know? It's worked. You notice every time they have um, any type of feature film about any of the prophets or any king, right, of Israel, they always have a so-called white man, right, an Amalekite, right, or Edomite playing us, right? And so that has warped the mind, right, of the world, thinking that, you know, those so-called Jewish people are Hebrews, that they are the Most High's, you know, chosen people, but they're not, right? Now, the Most High God gave this word as a sign upon us, right? They sought to, to, to remove that from us. They sought to remove the bands that, you know, bound us to the Father. You understand? Watch this. Let's prove it. So this is um, First Maccabees... Um, Chapter 3 and verse 48 says, And laid open the books of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint their likeness and their images. You see that? So that's something that they've been doing, you know, from the beginning. Okay? Watch this. We're going to prove something. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Okay? Let me show something real quick. This is um, Zechariah 1 and verse 13 says, And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me, with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith Ahia Shoshabeot, or Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. The way the heathen um, tries to treat us or has treated us in the past and even to this day, it makes the Most High very jealous for us, for our sake, okay? Watch this. It says, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. So, of course, we didn't follow Torah, and the Most High God was displeased with us, right? And so he had the heathen to come upon us. But the heathen did things that the Most High God even told them not to do. You understand? The Most High God you know, had us to be punished for a time, but it's like they went overboard. 16 says, therefore, thus saith Ahiah, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith Ahiah shall Shabaoth, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. 17 says, cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. 18 says, Then lifted I up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns. Okay? This is very important. Okay? It, it was, it was uh, four horns that the Most High God revealed to Zechariah. Okay, watch 19 this. says, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? So Zechariah wanted to know what was the understanding behind the four horns. Okay, watch this. It says, 19 again, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns 
which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. You see that? Now, we see something. It's four horns that scattered uh, Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Okay? So, of course, Judah being kingship of the Mishpacha or the family of the 12 families, right? Then, you're, then of course, you have the um, southern and northern kingdom, okay? You know, Israel is made up of two kingdoms, the, the, the southern kingdom and the uh, northern kingdom, all right? And then, of course, Jerusalem is a place where the families dwell, okay? So it says that um, the, the, the angel showed Zechariah the four horns that separated or scattered, okay, Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem, okay? Now, we're going to show what those four horns were, okay? Let's go to... to um, Let's go to Psalms 83. This is Psalms 83. And it says, Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Ahaya. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. You see that? Lifted up the head or the horn. You see that? You see that? Watch this. Watch this. It says, For lo, thine enemies have, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. You see that? Against Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Watch this. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. How can they cut us off from being a nation? Okay? Okay? If they remove our cords, if they remove the word. Because the word is what binds us to the Most High. How is that true? The Most High God made a written covenant with us. You understand that? If they can, if they can perpetrate a fraud using our covenant, okay, using that thing that was written for us, then they can, you know, perpetrate. They can act as if they're us. Watch this. It says, um, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy, against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. You see that? They wanted to cut us off from being who we were, the nation of Israel. You see that? Watch this. It says, um, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And you notice they don't call themselves Israelites. You notice that they don't call themselves Hebrew Israelites, even though that's what the Torah says. The Torah says that Ahaya, our Abba, is the God of the Hebrews. He's the Elohim of the Hebrews. They call themselves Jews or Jewish people. You see that? It says, um, for it says again, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Five says, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are against the most high. And if they're against the Most High, they're against his truth. They're against Christ, right? They're against um, the people of the Most High. They're against the true sons of the Most High, the children of light. They are against us. Watch this. It says, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Now, let's show those four horns, okay? Back in Zechariah, okay? These are the four horns. It says, the tabernacles of Edom, number one. That's that's the number one hater, all right? The number one hater of the nation is Edom, okay? It says the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, number two, Ishmael, 
or Ishmaya. They hate us. It says of Moab, number three, and the Hagarenes. You see that? That's four. Those are four horns. Those are the four horns that hate us so much. And of course, it's other nations that help them. Okay, it's 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 other nations that come together to help them. But those are the four horns. Okay, you know the four horns. They go get other nations to 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 try to help them um, with their you know agenda against Israel. But those are the four horns. Those are the four leaders. Okay, um, in the hate. All right, and like I said before, they came together. All right. The Jesuit peop, uh, powers, they came together um, and took our records. Um, Jesuit priest, you know, Catholic priest, you know, they came together, took our records and said, you know, don't don't read this. OK. And the reason why is because it shows them for who they are. It shows them for who they are. It shows them for who they truly are. OK. This. Apocrypha shows them for who they truly are. Okay? And they don't want you to read this. They don't want you to know. They would say, well, you know, it's not something that was given by the Most High. This was not given by the Spirit of the Most High. Oh, but it was. Oh, but it was. And we, and we proved that today. We proved that today. We proved today that the Apocrypha was given and is good for teaching. Now, like I said before, you know, this is just a little bit of information. This is just a little bit of knowledge to, to steer you in the right way. OK, but it's up to you to read and to go forth and to do more. OK. All right. Because this, you know, the scriptures say you need no man teach you anything. You understand for the same spirit which you have is going to bring you to all truth and all knowledge. You understand? All I'm doing is just telling you and showing you truth. Like this is the right way. Go that way. And then when you get on that way, the spirit, the Ruach is going to show you more. You understand? Um, let's show a little bit more. Let's see. Let's show something. Let's go to the book of Esther. Let's show that just real quick. And we're almost done. Okay. This is the book of Esther. Okay. Um, and we're going to show something. You see this? That's Esther chapter 10. Okay. And I'm going to read. Chapter 10 has three verses. Okay. I'm going to read verse 3. It says, For Mordecai the Hebrew was next unto king as a horse uh, and great among the Hebrews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Okay? So that was the last verse in the book of Esther. Okay? Chapter 10. Again, this is Esther chapter 10. Now, where can you, why does it just stop like that, right? Let's see something. Let's go to the Apocrypha. And you see what it says. I hope you can see it. Back some. You see where it says, where is it at? You see where it says, the rest of Esther? You see that? The rest of Esther? Watch this. And let's see where it picks up. Because Esther over here stops at chapter 10 and verse 3. Esther Esther 
Esther chapter 10, it picks right back up at 4. You see that? Picks right back up at 4. It says, part of the 10th chapter after the Greek. Then Mordecai said, God hath done these things. For I remember a dream which I saw concerning these matters, and nothing thereof hath faileth. You see that? And that is, of course, in the rest of Esther. Okay? And that's found in the Apocrypha. So, you cannot rightfully divide this word without having all of the word. Okay? Um, and I mean, it's, you know... So many other things, so many other things that we can go through. But the thing about it is you, you just have to do it yourself. You have to go through this word. You have to you have to read it for yourself. Don't just go with what people say. You understand? Let's read Isaiah. Isaiah 29. OK. Let's show something just really, really quickly. And we're going to be done. Isaiah 29 and 18 says, And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Okay? What does that mean? That means those that had ears but didn't hear, one day shall hear the words in this book. Okay? And, and understand them. Okay? Watch this. It says, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So the things that were obscure, the things that were kind of hid to the nation, the Most High God is going to open it and allow people to come to a full knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the word. Okay? You understand that? Watch this. It says, 19, the meek also shall increase their joy in the Most High, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Okay? 20 says, for the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for inequity are cut off. Now, when will that happen? When you get the knowledge. I just told you, I just showed you, by Hashem Yahshua, there were four horns, or there are four horns against the nation of Israel that don't want you to get this knowledge. Okay, they don't want you to have this knowledge. They don't want you. To, they don't want you to know who you are, because if you know who you are, if you know the 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 scripture that was given to you, then you can, um, you'll come to a full knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Of what's really going on. Okay. But this is something that they don't want you to see. They don't want you to know this. Okay. Watch this. 20 again says. For the terrible one is brought to naught. And meaning what they did is brought to nothing. When you understand. When you understand and understand. What they did. Okay. It says. And you apply the knowledge. You can't just understand it. You have to apply the knowledge. Okay. It says, uh, for the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for inequity are cut off. 21 says that make a man an offender for a word mm. that make a man an offender for a word. You see that? How can you offend by word? By not rightfully dividing it, you become an offender. You see that? You notice the scriptures say there's a there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is death. You see that? You see that? If you're not teaching this word right, then you're offending the most high. You understand? And the information is out here, but you allow these devils to tell you not to read it. Let me show something. This and this is so simple. Watch this for a second. Just watch this. This is so simple. This is the scripture that was given to us. 
Okay? Torah, Naviim, prophets, Kitavim, writings, Apocrypha, and Brikadashaya. Okay? This is what was given to us. Okay? Along with, of course, um, the book of Kanach, um, the book of Yesha, and the book of Yubal, which is Jubilees. Okay? But right now, we're just dealing with um, the Bible. All right? The book of books. Um, this is what was given to us. All right? Whenever um, King James, right, was commissioned to put the Hebraic scriptures together, this is what came out of that. Okay? This is the authorized version. All right? Now, in this, there is a verse, Deuteronomy chapter 4, that says you cannot add nor take away. In this, there is a verse, right, in the book of Revelations that said that we cannot add or take away. All right? The Apocrypha is in here with that verse. Okay? You cannot take this out of this. And say that you have the full scripture just because someone told you not to read it. Who are they? Who are they? This was given to us by the Most High God of Israel. This was given to us by the Most High God of Israel. Who are they to move it out? Or to take it away. You see that? You see how simple that is? You see how simple that is? Who are they? Right? Are we here to please men? Or to worship and follow the Most High God of Israel? Are we here to please men? Or to worship and follow the Most High God of Israel, Bahasham Yahshua. You see that? We almost done. It says, 20 says, For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for inequity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. You see that? There's a snare that's been laid for you. Right. They've taken the word. So you're not, you're not teaching it, you know, uh, in its fullness. Right. Watch this. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Watch this. Therefore, saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Yaakov, Yaakov shall now shall not now be ashamed. You see that? You can't be ashamed when you have knowledge. You see that? No one can tell me that this is not truth. I know it's truth. I studied it. I know it. I studied it myself. The scriptures say, study to show thyself. I studied to show myself, and now I know for myself. It don't matter if somebody come in here talking all Brolic, you know what I mean? The scriptures say that in these days and times, the spirit shall speak expressly, right? It don't matter. It don't matter how adamant, how, how loud, you know what I mean? They can start crying if they want to. But this word is what the Most High God gave us. You see that? Watch this. It says, 22, Therefore, thus saith Ahiah, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Yaakov, Yaakov shall not to now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. You know, like when somebody asks you about a scripture and you just don't know it and you turn into a pale face because you don't study. Because you say that you love the most high God of Yahshua Allah, but you don't know text, you don't know scripture. And so then you feel like a fool. That's that's what it is. You understand? 
His Majesty said, you do err, not knowing the scripture, neither the power of the Most High. Yahshua is the power of the Most High. That's his word. How can we prove that? How do we know that I just told the truth? Right? How did the Most High God create the world? Create the earth by his what? By his word. By his word. You see that? Watch this. It says, um, 23, But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Yaakov and shall fear the Elohim of Israel. 24 says, they also that erred in spirit. We praise the Most High. How do you err? Just said it. His Majesty said, ye do err not knowing the scripture, nor the power of the Most High. You see that? 24, they also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding. And they that murmured shall learn doctrine. You see that? When somebody asks you something, you know, you, you, you say what you think it is or you say a little something pertaining to some, something that you heard somebody else say. But you don't say in the book of, you know, numbers, it says, right? You don't say in the book of first Maccabees or you don't say in the book of Isaiah. You don't say in the book of Obadiah because you don't know doctrine because because you've been taught that you don't have to know doctrine. You've been taught that you don't have to know doctrine, but that's not what the scriptures say. Right? Watch this. Let's go to um we almost done. We almost done. Let's just go to Psalms really, really quickly. Psalms 111. It says It says, Praise ye the Lord. This is Psalms 111. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright. And in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great. What are the works of the Lord? Everything, but also his word. Okay. The works of the Lord are great sought out of them that have pleasure therein. Okay. His works, his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion he hath given meat unto them that fear him. You see that? We have the word because we fear the most high. We have the meat, right? Watch this. It says, he hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. What is his covenant is his word. Six says, he hath shewed his people the power of his works. We praise the most high. His majesty said, you did not you 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 do err not knowing the, the 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 word of the most high neither the power of the most high right it says he hath shewed his people the power of his works uh that he may give them the heritage of the heathen the works of his hands are verity and judgment all his commandments are sure they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness he sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and revered is his name. The fear of Ahia is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. You see that? Now, something just came to mind. We praise the most high. We almost done. It's going to be the last thing. I remember growing up, right? People would always say, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, if you, um, it's a few things that you cannot do or you'll definitely go to Sheol. You, you, you'll definitely go to hell. And they would say, you cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost, right? 
That's in the scripture. So that was proven. And they said, um, you can't kill yourself. Right? You can't kill yourself. And so, of course, being young, I would always say, well, yeah, you know, you, you, know, you, you can't kill yourself. You know what I mean? You can't do it. And, of course, the understanding, my understanding at the time was, you know, because if you kill yourself, you can't ask for forgiveness. Right? It makes perfect sense. If you, if you kill yourself, you know, who's going to ask forgiveness for, your, for the sin of you killing yourself? Right? But the scriptures teach us. You know what I mean? The scriptures teach us. Um, and as I, you know, advanced in learning, I wanted to know where that was in scripture, that you can't kill yourself. Because if it was truly um, a sin, it would be it would be in scripture. Okay? It would be somewhere in scripture. It, w it wouldn't just be something, you know, that people said. It would be something that the Most High God said. Right? So, you know, I wanted to find it. Okay? And I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But, you know, I, and I found it. I found where it said, you know, thou shall not. You, you cannot kill yourself. Okay? Where did I find it? In the Apocrypha, we praise the Most High. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Seek not death in the era of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. You see that? We praise the Most High. We praise the Most High. We praise the Most High. You see that? We praise the Most High. Everything that the Most High God gave us is in Scripture. I'm going to read that one more time. It says, this is uh, the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Seek not death in the era of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. You see that? We praise the Most High. I hope that this teaching um, brought some light on um, any issues that people may have had with the Apocrypha. Um, I hope that the, you know this teaching was edifying to the to the nation, to the body, and we praise the Most High. If anyone has any questions, any more questions, you know, please send it to me. We praise the Most High. Shalom.